Morning, First Love family. Good to be here with you again in the uh, mothership here at First Love Church. Got Nikki, my right hand. Got Matt, my left hand. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. Having these two here has been such a blessing. Look, if you don't ever get a chance to say hi to Nikki or to say hi to Matt, please, please do so because um, they're all kind of in prison up here. Don't really get to spend that much time in church, although Matt's down in the sound booth a lot. But just say hi. Offer up your support because they work really hard to keep this thing floating and to keep it growing. Anyway, so today, you guys, we're going to be still in, in 2 Timothy. And uh, we're going to be starting out in chapter 4. Uh, let's say, let's just start right in in verse 1. I like it. Let's check it out. Here we go. 2 Corinthians 4, starting in verse 1. I charge you. Oh, that means he's giving us an assignment, right? He's like, I'm telling you this is what you got to do. It's Paul. I'm probably going to want to listen. He was a tough dude, right? Supposed to have been a little guy. Kind of. I picture it was like, uh, like with a friar tuck haircut, you know, bald on the top, little wisps down around his ears, and kind of short and meekly with watery eyes. I, I, I just picture him that way. Uh, when I get to heaven and meet him, it might not be like that at all, but that's my picture. But he says this, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, whoo, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, he says. Preach the word. Be ready in and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. Let's go back and unpack this, shall we? So, he gives us our, our marching orders. And he says, look, preach the word, which is just preach the word. And the reason, and, and he says, do it in and out of season, whether you feel like it or don't feel like it, whether you've got a stomach ache or a headache or a back ache or a leg ache, i got a knee ache right now. He says, preach the word. Don't worry about yourself. Worry about these people who are being lost. Worry about these people who are turning away from the truth. For the time will come. Oh, and he says, convince, rebuke, exhort. Convince, rebuke, exhort. But then he says, do it with all long suffering and teaching. I, I'm still trying to figure out how you, how you rebuke and exhort with all long suffering, but evidently it can be done. Uh, I don't know how you rebuke somebody with long suffering. Like, brother, I just want to tell you, you know, uh, you're really messing up right now, but I just want to tell you, I guess that's exactly how you do it. I've got to tell you in love, man, get back on the right track. You're being, you're being, you're being fooled, convinced, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. You know, it's a sad thing that it's something they're going to they're be perceiving it as something that they have to endure. Like sitting in that classroom, in that class that you hated in high school, and the teacher's like, wah, 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 wah. And you can't stay awake. And, but, but, but for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. What they want is fables and, 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 and fairy stories. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. In other words, they're going to go looking for the churches where the pastor tells them what they want to hear to make them feel better about themselves and raise up their self-esteem, never mind the truth of the Word of God, the blood of Christ, the power of salvation, the job of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The consequences of not obeying the Lord. The consequences of not following after Christ. They don't want to hear any of that. What they want to hear is, yes, your inner child. Blah, 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 blah. <coughs> What's your inner child got to do with your eternal life is what I want to know. 
And I, I do talk about the inner child when I'm doing groups and treatment centers and everything because there, uh, there's a lot of trauma in the childhood of the addict that needs to be gotten rid of, that needs to be dealt with. And you know how we deal with it? The love of Christ. The love of Christ. If we continually share with people the intentions of God for them, <clears throat> and that before they were in their mother's womb, he knew them, and that all the terrible things that they went through as a child, that he's going to use it. Like in the AA Big Book, it says it perfectly. No matter how far down the scale you have gone, you will see how your experience can benefit others. Look, man, no matter how badly you've been hurt, you're alive. And God saw to that. And now he wants to take that hurt and use it for someone else who's been equally hurt and has found no solution because they've never heard their story until you told it. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, not God's desires, self-centeredness and, 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 and selfishness, the root of all our problems, and we're ruled by a hundred forms of fear, another big book quote, but so accurate, that according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers who will tell them what they want to hear and they will turn their ears away from the truth. Hard to turn these big old ears. Boop, boop. But, but being turned aside to fables. Fables. Idolatry. Fables and idolatry is what they're going to be turned away to. And it's unfortunate because there's so many people out there who are going into churches that are not teaching proper doctrine. They're not teaching the Word of God. They're teaching traditions of men. They're teaching self-help doctrine, self-help rhetoric. There's no self-help. I can't help myself. I am, I, I am a sinner, but I'm saved by grace. And that's because of grace. Saved by grace because of grace. Not of something I have done. But it's a gift of God. According to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But then he, he offers Timothy this final statement. He says, but you, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Be watchful in all things, keep your eyes open, walk circumspectly. Circumspectly, again, you know, and I, I've used that a lot lately, but circumspectly ha has a, a, a strong, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? A strong suggestion, and that's not the word I was looking for, a strong suggestion that it's where you put your feet, but that your eyes are on your feet. Be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. You know, and I quoted this, uh, I think, yesterday, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. For no temptation has overtaken you such as is common to man. And I made the comment yesterday that, uh, that it's... it's not just temptation, but persecution, sorrow, woundedness, all of these things. No temptation, no sorrow, no, 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 no problem has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful. He will always provide a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. And you know what that escape is? What it always is? It's his throne of grace. And I say this a lot as well because it's so important to us in this generation that we're living in. We can come boldly before his throne of grace to find help in time of need. We can come boldly before his throne of grace. And that's what that is. Be watchful in all things and do reflections, do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry. What is your ministry? Shine a light. Shine a light where it's dark. Expose the things of darkness and replace them 
with light. You can do that because you have God. You can do that because you have the Holy Spirit. You can walk into a pitch black room and click that magic power button on your chest, on, in your heart. Let there be light. And guess what? God will make light where you stand. God will make light where you stand. And so we desire to be holy in Him. We desire to be obedient to Him. We desire to give Him glory that He might be exalted. And by His exaltation, we might be set free. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, You are good and mighty. And we love You so much. And I just pray for every heart that's watching this morning whether you're a first love person or you stumbled onto this Devo or just keep coming back. Keep coming back and keep trusting God and keep praising Him. Keep, an abandon, keep on abandoning yourself to the cross. He loves you. He loves us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you all tomorrow. Love you much. I was a dead. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.